Okay, so today's my new uh, solar desulfating unit based on the Bedini S SG. It's pretty much a strict SSG circuit. There's nothing modified from it. I've got a few changes from my last video, but uh, they were included in comments below the last video. Nothing significant particularly, just the resistance on the base and such. But I decided that I was going to get a couple of solar panels that were better matched to the kind of circuit that uh, that I had so the output for one thing these are these are two fifteens for a total of thirty which is a little bit uh, of a proud statement in terms of what I consider to be realistic um, now these I think like that's a folding solar panel combination and they're hooked in parallel um, you're gonna find these kind of solar panels at uh, Canadian Tire or uh, like down in the States I think a lot of guys get them off of Harbor Freight um, they have their advantages and their disadvantages overall they're alright uh, if you get them on a discount if you pay full price I don't think they're worth the money there's a couple of distinct disadvantages that are that stem around the quality for one thing, they're glass backed. There's no TFT sheet or nothing. So they're very fragile panels. Um, I'll be real surprised if they're tempered glass. It looks like just normal glass. It's not crazed at all. So they're gonna have heating problems. With no crazed glass, they're gonna have dynamic hot spots and amorphous are already known for burning out early as it is. So they're cheap solar panels. Like I got that pair for for 99 bucks and at that point you know if you believe they're 30 watts you're at around three dollars a watt so it's not outrageous but they want it like normally 249 or something for this of course you know if you're American and you're listening to this you gotta understand everything up here in Canada is more expensive so I know that sounds outrageous and you probably never see that price in the States but that's the way it is up here stuff is really expensive and um, Anyhow, at three bucks a watt, they're okay. And what it does allow me to do is it provides a bit more amps than a trickle charger, uh, but I don't have to dedicate what I would call a real solar panel, uh, something in the 90 to the 150 to 280 watt category. I'm not gonna do on that because I already know that this circuit at absolute maximum can only draw an amp and a half. And those panels at ab absolute amp maximum can only deliver two so you know it's a pretty decent match I didn't really have any problems getting it fired up um, I have a I believe it's a 80 volt uh, somewhere 80 volt 15,000 microfarad capacitor somewhere in that coupling the two for impedance matching I am running through an additional big fat diode there because I didn't bother to unscrew on the back of the panel and see whether or not see whether or not they uh, are diode protected in the way they're paralleled I don't know I just I don't trust that they're diode protected and this is my first time through so there's some interesting observations certainly I don't think this would be the way to charge batteries um, there's some inherent losses in, in doing this right away that you that you see I have mine dialed to the absolute lowest frequency I believe I read um, Ashweth uh, from Panakia he made a comment in the Bedini files something about uh, dialing it I believe that's where I read it anyways I read that you should dial it kinda to around an amp input so in other words, if I have this thing restricted at the base and then by nature of how it's operating, 
it's going to be further restricted. There's no point in really restricting your input. You might as well run her wide open and go from there. It. I have a momentary switch down here. You can see that it required hitting that, but then again, it always does. There was no problem starting, and it does seem to be able to vary a bit in oscillation and not and not die on me, which I'm happy. Like if you listen to that, you can probably hear the thing, and then when I come over here, now you can see I'm partially shading these solar panels, which is changing the input which inherently is changing the frequency but the coil doesn't die it doesn't stop oscillating and I think that's partially due to the capacitor as well a couple of observations that I made um, just if you're curious it's all this is all pretty new to me the capacitor itself when I hooked it up to the solar panel came up to the rated voltage voltage of the solar panels which was pretty high it's around it came up to almost 24 volts I think it was but when it's running, it actually uh, actually doesn't go that high at all. And I thought, wow, well, geez, that's a little weird. Oh, actually, now it's come up. It's up to about 12 now. It was only at 6 when I checked it last time. I may have had a bad connection, though. So it's sitting at around 12 volts right now. Which I guess means that it's dumping faster than it can fill to a point. I don't know exactly what to make of that. When I check the voltage output on my circuit, right at the diode, or sorry, right after the diode, see like I'm on negative rail, and then just after rectification, so this is my DC, DC output, in theory, I get a higher, oh, see I'm over 20 volts there now, so that's good actually, I was at, wh what I was concerned about was I was reading 16 on, or sorry, 6 on the capacitor, and I was reading 17 over here, but now, now I'm up to about 20, 23.5 volts DC. Which is about as high as I got it off the wall running on uh, 14 volts input. And uh, this battery started off, I ran it right down till it was reading 9's loaded. And then when it recovered over the night, it was back up to 11.8 when I hooked this thing up. So it's fairly depleted, it had a 20 watt load for well, at least 10 or 15 hours. And she's sitting at 12.3 right now, charging. Of course, that's going to drop. But knowing that it was sitting at 11.8 before. Um, and you can see, like, when you watch a lot of videos, you'll watch somebody hook a Bedini up to um, a battery. And it'll be, let's say, 12.6. And they'll, like, check it out. It's charging. And it's, like... 12.65, 12.67, or let's say they even start higher, like 12.8, and it'll be like 12.89, 12.90, 12.91. Yeah, well, I suggest you watch a video that the Magneticist put out a little while ago, and he was talking about charging and how fast the upper limit climbs. You're not going to see this climb, because this battery is actually dead. And the problem with like 90% of the videos that you watch people using Bedinis on, the battery's not dead. It's actually charged already, and they're showing you how fast they can overcharge it, which is absolute bullshit. It tells you absolutely nothing. And even what I'm telling you, even what I'm showing you right now is, is absolutely nothing. Uh, because this is, this is a charging voltage. I need to disconnect this thing and let it sit for two hours before you can actually determine where the battery's at. Anyway, I know it is charging, or I, I'm quite sure it's charging, so I'm going to leave this for about an hour. And you can see what its charging voltage is, is sitting at 12.3 right now. So we'll have a, we'll have a, a break and I'll, I'll be back and we'll have a look at it in an hour. But that's my little solar desulfating setup. Okay, so it's been about a half an hour now. 
20 minutes, half an hour at least anyway. And uh, the sun's a little brighter right now. So I'll have a look at a couple of things again. Circuit's still running, as you can hear. Doing pretty good. So I'm gonna check a couple of numbers here. And these numbers don't necessarily mean much. They, they lie, and I'm aware of that. But uh, they do, the way I look at it is, whether they lie or not isn't important because if you're comparing one time frame to the next, they are telling you what's happening over time, whether things are changing. And that's all I'm interested in. Because the sun has picked up a bit. Okay, so that peaked out over 20 volts. This is my output I'm looking at. So I'm dropping my ground lead on the ground of the circuit and my positive lead after rectification on the output of the Bedini. And it's now 25.5. So we got lots of volts coming out of the end of it. Uh, of course I don't have an ammeter so we don't know what's going in the battery but I would suspect over a couple of hundred milliamps at this point. Now when I had my original SSG kit circuit that thing only drew about 80 or 100 milliamps and the output was only like you know in the in a solar setting it was difficult it was just too small and too finicky you need something that draws a, an amp or better to, to, to keep things rolling otherwise it becomes just too finicky okay so that's what we have there uh, let's have a look across the capacitor again just for curiosity's sake Now that's reading about 13. Okay. And let's look, look at the battery with the charging voltage as it was 12.34 when I left about 20 minutes ago or something. Well, it says 12.4. So I'm going to switch it to the lower setting where we get a second decimal place here so it's definitely climbing it's gone up its charging voltage is up a, a full tenth of a volt over 20 or 30 minutes so I'll write something at the end of the video and tell you what happened after Four hours of sun or something. I might add the one the one last thing I will say is that this is the first time I've owned this style of panel and I own probably one of almost every kind of panel you've ever seen except for well of the typical ones anyway. I own amorphous polycrystalline. I own thin film amorphous. I own uh, monocrystalline. And the one thing I will say about these in their favor is that when you partially shade them and I mean like when you walk up and create a shadow on the panel the effect is not as drastic as on polycrystalline or uh, monocrystalline now I would say just about everything else is a con but that's a pro and if you happen to be in a situation where you know you're gonna have trees shading your panel or for example you got room to put a couple of extra ones on your on your uh, RV or something and you know you always park where you're shaded by trees because you like to park in that kind of a setting and it's available to you then uh, then this might be a panel you would consider Alrighty, thanks for watching.